37. Jimmy wasn't at recess. His three friends didn't bother Alan. Alan was smart enough to know the two were connected. Without their large leader, they were just like the rest of the children they regularly terrorized. When the school day ended, Alan stepped out into the brisk air. The winter sky was bright, clear, and warm enough to make a jacket unnecessary. Alan walked with a measured pace as the other children flooded past him and into the schoolyard. Most were headed toward the copse of trees. He stopped for a moment, watching his classmates run with reckless abandon, backpacks slapping against their shoulders to be first in the queue. The ice cream man was there, of course. The van's side door was already open. From this far away, he was just a cream-colored figure, the hat slung low over his face. The first kids made it to the van. For a moment, nothing happened. Then there was the sound of children shouting orders, their voices running atop one another. Alan heard a laugh that set his teeth on edge. The ice cream man. Why was Daddy so afraid of the ice cream man? Why am I? He mumbled aloud. In reflux, Alan looked toward the parking lot, expecting to see his father standing there with that bright smile on his face, the one he always had when he saw his son. No, Daddy, not today. Alan looked back toward the tight-knit pines. Was it the ice cream man whispering to him at night? Alan shivered. He had to know. He started walking. With each step, the words became more clear. Icy pop! Zots! Sandwich! Taffy! Names of different treats shouted at the vendor who deftly kept up with each request, palming money, making change, and handing out each desired treat like an automaton. As Alan approached, small groups of children brushed past him, opening their candy or already enjoying their treats. The crowd was thinning. Five minutes, and Alan wasn't sure just how many of his classmates had already been served. No more than ten feet away from the van now, Alan peered at the ice cream man. The long sleeves of his uniform covered his arms. Skin-tight gloves, the exact same color as his suit, covered his hands. The man's neck, chin, his smile, and the long nose were the only features visible. Alan stared at the man. His smile was wide and inviting, yet it could have been a dog's face set in a snarl. The ice cream man's falsetto voice brimmed with exuberance as he repeated back the orders. He reached down, his fingers gingerly sliding dollar bills from hands. Oh, that's too much, he told one of the children, handing back an errant dollar and some change. Alan couldn't help but smile at the man. It was just a man, after all. Just a man making a living. One who liked kids. Then why am I so afraid of him? Alan wondered. He watched the crowd until there were only a few kids left. The ice cream man looked at him as he counted out some more change. The smile grew wider. He nodded to Alan. Confused, Alan took another step forward. The ice cream man knew him? The last child at the counter received his treat and walked past Alan. Alan stared up at the ice cream man. He leaned over, his hands on the counter. His smile dropped a bit. Hey, kid, you um Trey Legette's son? A shiver ran up his spine. That falsetto voice saying his father's name jarred him. Leger, sir, Alan corrected. Ah, the man nodded. Yeah, Leger. I remember now. The man blinked at Alan and then looked around the playground, as if to see if any more customers were coming. Mm, how's your dad? Alan shrugged. Okay, I guess. He broke his arm, sir. The ice cream man laughed. You can call me Reggie, son. The man leaned forward, offering his hand. Reggie, Alan repeated back. He grabbed the offered hand and squeezed, just as his father had taught him. Nice to meet you, Reggie. The man's hands felt thin and bony beneath the gloves. Likewise, the man said. They shook. Alan let go and the man laughed. Quite a grip you got there, partner. Your dad teach you that? Alan nodded. Told me it's how men greet one another. 
Reggie laughed again. It was an infectious belly laugh, and Alan couldn't help but smile. He didn't want to like this man. He didn't want to. Your dad's right, the man said. Reggie paused, his eyes staring into Alan's. So, Reggie said, the voice dropping in tone the slightest bit from the falsetto. What can I get you? Alan blushed. Oh, I don't want anything, Reggie. Reggie's smile dimmed. I just wanted to meet you. Thank you for helping my dad. The man nodded. You're a good kid, Reggie said, his voice dropping again, the tone now barely recognizable. Ellen shivered. Time for me to pack up. Reggie held one hand beneath the overhang as he punched a button with the other. Ellen heard a click and saw the door shutter. Nice to meet you, Alan Leger, Reggie said. Reggie's face was covered in shadow now, but his eyes still gleamed. Tell your dad, the shadow said. I said get well soon. Even in the shadow, the man's grin was still visible. Ellen's mouth opened as he watched the grin elongate, the corners turning up impossibly high. With that, the overhang closed completely, accompanied by a series of clicks as it was bolted into place. Ellen stepped back from the curb, his skin impossibly cold in the warm sunlight. The van shuddered. Alan saw movement behind the driver's side window. He watched as the van pulled away, leaving him alone by the curb. The van's music started as soon as it turned the corner. The ice cream man. Alan shivered. Chapter 38 The path followed in the ice cream van's wake. He had thought about taking the back way home, but as loud as the music was, he'd have heard it no matter which direction he went. Besides, a normal route would be fastest, and if Jimmy Keel was waiting for him, there would be other people around to stop a fight. As he rounded the corner and headed down the Main Street sidewalk, he saw the van in the distance, a few kids beside it. As he approached, the side door closed back down and the truck moved on another block or two until adults or children stopped it again. The cycle repeated itself. Alan never got closer than a block away before the van began moving again. As the road wound and snaked, the bells became more and more distant and he completely lost sight of the van. The roiling in his stomach quieted. The ice cream man hadn't really been what he expected. Until the end. Alan shivered. The voice had dropped. The grin had changed. The man had become... He didn't have a word for it. Is that what Daddy saw? He wondered. Alan continued putting one foot in front of the other. This part of the road was lined with pine trees snaking toward the sky, their needles bright green with the recent winter rain. As he walked, he heard the shuffling of something in the trees. Squirrels. Awesome, maybe, or perhaps a stray dog. The feeling of being watched made him walk a little faster. The road finally began to straighten again, and around the bend, he saw the back of the ice cream van. The vehicle was stopped on the shoulder, hazard lights on. Alan stopped. The tingling in his spine was electric. The birds chirping in the trees halted. Alan let loose a long breath. He turned to look behind him. Nothing there but the empty road. Alan looked both ways and then ran to the other side of the road, as far from the ice cream van as he could get. As he made it to the other side, he heard the sound of a car behind him. He watched a blue sedan drive past. A dark-haired teenager behind the wheel was singing to a song Alan couldn't hear. The sedan disappeared up the road and around the next bend. Alan let out another long breath. Being stupid, he thought. Something rustled across the side of the road. Alan turned his head. Behind the white van, something was moving through the thick pines. Alan took a step backwards, and the movement stopped. He squinted, trying to make out exactly what it was. White. No, cream-colored. He took a step forwards, and it matched him. Alan's heartbeat rose in his chest like a thrash drum beat, loud enough to block out any other sound. 
Alan ran. He could hear it running through the brush, crunching dead leaves, snapping through dead falls, and breaking branches to keep up the pursuit. His pack smashed into his middle back again and again, flapping in time to his pounding heart. Alan was running flat out, afraid to look across the road, afraid he'd see his pursuer break through the tree line and fly toward him. Alan was barely aware he was nearing the end of the road's dead space. A car honked as its brakes squealed. Alan was halfway through the intersection, stumbling to a stop. He skidded on his Nikes and fell to the concrete, rolling in front of the car. He ended up facing the sky, the car's engine growling in his ears. Hey, kid, you okay? A woman's voice said from above him. Yeah, Alan muttered, rolling over on his chest. He tried to lift himself from the road on lacerated and bleeding hands. Arms snaked beneath his own. A slight moan of effort from the person behind him, and he was suddenly on his feet. Thanks, Alan said. Jesus, kid, the woman said as he turned around. You need to be more careful. Alan stared up into her kind, pale face. What the hell were you running from? He turned to look back from where he'd come. The ice cream van's music had started, loud, coming closer. He looked back at the woman. Nothing, Alan said. Just got spooked. Where do you live? She asked. Alan pointed down the tee. She nodded. You want a ride? The ice cream van's engine downshifted as it passed the T. Through the dark, tinted window, Alan could barely make out the driver's silhouette. Eyes forward, head straight. Alan shivered. I can walk, he said. God, I hate those bells, the woman said from behind him. Alan nodded. So do I. Chapter 39. As Trey stepped into the car, Carolyn smiled at him. Kincaid said you're sane, she said as he closed the door. Trey turned to her, leaned in, and kissed her. No, she didn't, Trey said with a smile. She just told you I was ready to come home. Carolyn sighed. Are you? she asked. Yeah, Trey said. He turned to look out the windshield. Are you ready to take me home? he whispered. She reached out, patting his shoulder. Yes, Trey, I am. Trey turned back to her. Let's go, baby. Carolyn put the car in drive and headed out from beneath the hospital awning. Before you ask, she said, wheeling the car through the turn, Alan's doing fine. Trey nodded. Okay, glad to hear that. He tapped his fingers on the console. Question is, are you okay? She smiled. Will be. Missed my man, she said, placing her right hand on his knee. He missed you too. The two drove in silence as they headed out into the freeway. Carolyn skirted through the traffic, heading for the toll road. The ice cream man came by the house, she whispered. Trey turned to her, a frantic look in his eyes. What? She nodded. He came by to see how you were doing. Jesus, he didn't come into the house, did he? She laughed. Hell no. Dick and I met him outside. The car intersected onto the relatively clear toll road. Carolyn accelerated to 70 miles an hour. She glanced at Trey. Kind of spooked me, though. Trey blew a hiss of air out between his teeth. What did he say? She shrugged. Just, he was sorry he didn't stick around after I came to pick you up. She forced a giggle. Said you spooked him. Trey said nothing. An uncomfortable, palpable silence filled the car. I don't like him. Trey nodded. What did he call himself? Reggie, she said in a flat tone. (laughs) Trey said, but a smile appeared on his face. Reggie. Christ. Yeah. Has Alan met him? Trey asked, a quiver in his voice. No, Carolyn said, glancing at him. I don't think so. He hasn't said anything, at least. Trey nodded. Good. He glanced at the clock in the dash. Alan will be out of school now, he whispered. He's fine. 
I know, Trey said. He leaned back in the seat and closed his eyes. She glanced at him again. He was already asleep. Chapter 40 The house was quiet. His heart rate had finally managed to leave the racetrack and settle into its slow, steady rhythm. Even the walk across the T-intersection to his house had been heart-palpitatingly brutal. The ice cream man, the ice cream van, the woman in her car. Too much, just too much. Alan sat on the couch, his scratched and ripped backpack on the floor beside him. His trip to the concrete managed to wear a hole in his sweatshirt, as well as one through his jeans. Mommy was going to ask questions. Alan looked at the bandage on his arm. The wound wasn't all that bad, just friction burn, what Daddy called road rash. Small price to pay to get away from the thing in the woods. Alan frowned in the darkened living room. The white blur of a figure moving through the deadfalls, breaking branches, matching him stride for stride. Had to be the ice cream man. The memory of the word yum glaring from the back of the parked truck in those bright, happy crimson letters. Alan shuddered. Daddy saw something in the ice cream man. Now Alan saw something too. Something rumbled outside. He cocked an ear and furrowed his brow. Mommy was home. Why was she home this early? Alan sat up from the couch and walked toward the kitchen. He heard the garage door closing and smiled. The laundry room door opened. Mommy, you're... He froze in silence and then smiled. Daddy? Daddy stood in the kitchen, the corners of his lips rising upwards. Alan ran to his father, hugging him around the waist. Here, champ, Daddy whispered. You're back? His father nodded. You're not going away again. Not if I can help it, his father said. Daddy stared down at the boy, his face turning into a frown. You have an accident? Alan looked up at him, a flush rising to his cheeks. Fell down, Alan said. Hey, you're blocking the road, guys, Mommy said from behind them. Alan peeked around Daddy's waist and saw Mommy just behind him, one hand clutching her valise, the other holding a fat manila envelope. Alan giggled. Okay, Mommy, Alan said. He let go of his father's waist and walked to the breakfast table. Daddy followed him, sitting down in one of the black wooden chairs. Alan cocked his head, his own smile disappearing into a frown. You okay, Daddy? Alan asked. Daddy looked up at him from the table. His face was a little pale, and his eyes were scrunched. Arm hurts, kiddo. Daddy licked his lips. But I'm glad to be home. Daddy thrummed his fingers against the glass table's surface. He pointed his index finger at Alan's arm. Must have been a bad fall. Alan bit his lower lip. Want to talk about it? I'm going upstairs to change clothes, Mommy called as she made her way into the living room. Daddy's eyes continued staring into Alan's. Can you talk about it, Alan? Alan sat down in the chair opposite his father. I don't know what happened. Okay, can you tell me what you think happened? The ice cream man chased me, Daddy. It was what he wanted to say. It was what he thought, but... I got spooked and I ran, Alan said, and I fell. Leaning forward, Daddy's good hand reached across the table and grasped Alan's. What spooked you, son? Alan said nothing. Daddy smiled. We have to make a deal, boy. Daddy cleared his throat, his eyes dropping back down at the table. You know about the closet man. Yes, Daddy, Alan whispered. The closet man's not real, Alan. Never was. He raised his eyes back to Alan's. You know that, right? Alan nodded. But I saw him anyway. It's something the mind does. It scares me, but it can't hurt me, right? Alan opened his mouth to speak and then closed it. Hey, Daddy said. We have to make a deal, kiddo. You tell me everything, and I tell you everything. No matter how crazy it sounds? Alan asked. Daddy laughed. No matter how crazy it sounds. I, he said with a smirk, am the master of crazy. He stuck his tongue out and crossed his eyes. Alan smiled in spite of himself. 
His father leaned back into his chair, his lips in a flat, expressionless line. Okay, Daddy. Alan took a deep breath. I met the ice cream man. Daddy's brows furrowed. You met him? Yes, Alan whispered. Daddy leaned forward a little, placing his good hand on the table. What happened? Alan shrugged. I don't like him, Daddy. Something's wrong about him. Daddy said nothing. He... Alan swallowed hard. He changed somehow. What do you mean? Daddy asked. His face, his voice. He stopped looking friendly. What? Daddy said, his face growing stern. What did you see? I don't know, Alan said. He tried to find the words, but they wouldn't come. The face elongating the slightest bit, the nose growing longer, and the teeth. The teeth. Just changed, Alan said. Daddy leaned all the way forward in his chair, his face filled with excitement. What about the eyes? He asked in a rush of air. What are you guys talking about? Mommy asked from the kitchen entrance. Nothing much, Daddy said without breaking Alan's stare. Nothing we can't finish talking about later. He nodded to Alan. Alan returned it. Daddy grabbed Alan's hand and squeezed. Right, kiddo? Yeah, Mommy, Alan said to his mother. Okay, Mommy said. I'm going for a smoke, Daddy said. He stood up from the table, slid open the glass door, and walked out into the deck. Alan watched him go. He felt better, but something in the way his father had reacted when he told him about the ice cream man had brought goose pimples to his skin. Chapter 41 The sun had dropped very low in the sky, threatening to disappear altogether. Trey stared up at the thin, herringbone cirrus clouds, one hand on the wooden deck rail. The backyard. This is where he loved to come when he needed to think. The large deck. The inviting furniture shaded by large oak and gum tree branches. But not this time of year. The leaves had long been shed, and it would be at least another month before the trees began sprouting new ones. Trey? Carolyn's voice called from the back door. Yes? he said without turning around. Alan and I are going to get us something for dinner. You want to come? Trey thought for a moment and finally turned to her. No, he said and smiled. I'm going to enjoy the last of the sun. You know where you guys are going? She rolled her eyes. Hell no. We'll figure it out at the last second like we always do. He laughed. Okay, fine. You know what I like. She walked from the back door to him, her nose close to his. Yes, baby, I do. She kissed him quickly on the lips and then turned to walk back. He grabbed her with his free hand, drew her close, and kissed her. When he was done, he drew back. She was flushed. And that'll get you everywhere later, she whispered. Watching her walk away from him, her head turned to smile at him over her shoulder made everything seem so normal, as though he hadn't spent the last couple of days in the nuthatch. Trey sighed and turned back to watch the sun. It was completely below the houses, nothing left but a fading glow. He looked around the deck. He changed, Alan had said. The boy hadn't been able to explain it in any detail, but he had been close to saying something important. Trey was sure of it. Bells. Distant. Trey swung his head toward the house. The sound was getting closer, louder. Trey stepped toward the house and then stopped. The grubby man's lined, wrinkled, and angry face jumped into his mind. He shook it aside, clenching a fist. Not now, he whispered. The image left him, the world snapping back into reality. Heard thrashing in his chest, he went into the house and headed to the front door. He peered through the tempered and warped glass. The world beyond seemed jagged and out of focus. The bells grew louder. Trey reached for the doorknob and stopped. The ice cream man, traveling the blocks again? This late? His skin tingled with electricity, heart still slam dancing away. If you go out there, a voice inside said, you're going to panic again. 
Trey's fingers began to loosen from the metal knob. You're You're going going to pass pass out in another fit, fit. or worse. You have to face face your fears, Trey, Trey. Tony Downs' voice said in his mind. Before Trey could stop himself, his fingers swiveled the knob and the door creaked open. That inside voice, the child within, screamed in fear. Trey stepped through the open door, closing it behind him. The bells were deafening. Across the street, Dick was already on his front porch, glaring at the oncoming van. Trey continued walking down the front deck and onto the driveway. He didn't bother looking up the street. Instead, he focused on Dick, watching as the man turned to follow the van's approach. The bells. Trey closed his eyes for a second and then opened them. In his peripheral vision, the cream-colored van came into view. Trey felt blood pounding in his ears, his electrified skin, and the buzz of fear. But he stood his ground. The van was in full view now. Ice cream treats, sandwiches, yummy! Trey smiled. The blood-red words and images of children being tortured were gone. He blew out a long hiss through his teeth and watched the van head to the cul-de-sac. Nothing, 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 he thought. The van rounded the cul-de-sac, the bells blasting loud enough to hurt his ears, but he didn't care. The van, it was nothing more than an ice cream van, plain and simple. Trey watched as it passed him again. The passenger side window was dark. Trey's smile faded back into a flat expression. Glowing yellow eyes stared at him from the van's cab. He felt dizzy, but managed to stay on his feet. Hey! Dick's voice said above the din. Trey turned his eyes to the front of the driveway. The big man strode toward him, a warm smile on his face. You're back! Yeah, Trey said, extending his hand. The smile was infectious. They let the cuckoo out of the nest. "Uh Uh-huh, Dick said. His smile faded a little as he pointed to Trey's arm. How's the arm? Trey looked down at it. The pain from hitting Tony had subsided quite a bit, but it still ached. Doing okay, I guess. He raised his eyes to Dick's and smirked. You just want to know if I can play disc golf, don't you? Dick laughed. That obvious? Hell yes. Trey put his good arm on Dick's broad shoulder. And this time, I'll have an excuse for sucking. No, you won't, Dick said. Not like it's your throwing arm. He turned toward the sound of the ice cream van's bells. The van had moved off the tee and was heading deeper into the neighborhood. Fucking hate that thing. Yeah, Trey agreed. Without turning, Dick asked, You feel okay? You looked a little wobbly. Trey shrugged. No, I'm all right. I just... Trey licked his lips. I just need time. Dick nodded and turned back to Trey. The smile on his face had returned. All you need, bro. I'm here, okay? One corner of Trey's lips raised in a smirk. Yeah, you fat fuck. You're always there. Ha! Dick said. Juvenile. Very, very puerile. His smile grew wider. I'm proud of you. Never thought you'd descend to my level. Well... Trey said with a laugh, was bound to happen sooner or later. The sun's glow had finally disappeared completely from the sky, leaving the street shrouded in deep shadow. A pair of headlights broke through the gloom. Guess dinner's here, Trey said as Carolyn's car pulled into the driveway. Yeah, Dick said. He clapped Trey on the shoulder. Let me know about this golf. He walked back down the driveway, saluting Carolyn as she pulled the car into the garage. Trey watched him go, the smile still on his face.